Ready. Camera. Yeah. Welcome to Puzzle with Emilia. Bienvenidos a Puzzles con Emilia. <laughs> On today's video, it's not only going to be a recap of our new puzzles, our puzzling life, the fewer comments and so much more from October, but it's also a celebration because this channel has now over a thousand subscribers. <laughs> and I think it has been only like three and a half months since I started this channel. Yeah, yeah. It was somewhere in July, later in July. July 20. Yeah that I started this channel. So it feels quite special that so many people have like turned into this channel to watch our videos and also comment quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, your comments are really appreciated. Absolutely. And we're also celebrating our anniversary today, exactly today. <laughs> Woo! So that's why my husband Daniel is the special guest here. Also this Willy who is a little bit trying to guard that nobody will bother our video, but he's actually doing it himself. Anyway, Daniel, oh, yeah. I think people are very interested because you are, at least you used to be a non-puzzler. How is it sharing your life with somebody who is addicted to puzzles? <laughs> yeah, that, that's... That's really something else, because uh, I would say that puzzling is not like a very well-known hobby. So seeing someone so into puzzles and solving puzzles so quickly, it's just really mind-blowing to me, <laughs> at least. And actually it inspired me to start puzzling. I never puzzled before. Uh, I think I started when Emilia was in the World Championship. Yeah, and you were with me at yeah. the whole event. Yeah, and the event was so intense. It was as someone watching from the crowd. It, you, you don't think it would be that intense puzzling, but yeah, it was quite intense. And everyone were like, uh, from the crowd at least, <laughs> everyone were like, who is going to take it? Who is going to be the first one? Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was really something else. And how would you say, like, what are the downsides in like everyday life? I would say that the downside would be that we don't have space in our <laughs> house. <laughs> and every time there is like, for one of the things is the kitchen counter, which is always full of puzzles, either a ready-made puzzle or just puzzle boxes. Yeah, random oh, piles everywhere. Yeah, random piles. And then, well, it's the kitchen counter, so you can't use it anymore for cooking. Or our kitchen table, this is now a kitchen... Well, it's not... It's, it's a puzzle table. It's a puzzle, table. It's a puzzle <laughs> table. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yesterday I was trying to eat breakfast and we have four chairs, but all of them are full of puzzles. So I have to actually empty one chair so I was able to eat the breakfast. Yeah, this is just... <laughs> yeah, so basically the space. So. Yeah. But the, talking about that, we have actually bought new shelves for the puzzles this month. Uh, you can actually see them on both sides yeah. of us. So let's talk about a little bit more about our new puzzle shelves. I think it, one of, it was one of my first videos I was actually showing the original puzzle cabinet we have in the bedroom. But I mean, after that, I think we have like doubled the amount of puzzles. So it was two weeks ago, I told you like, hey, what about we get a shelf in the, uh, in the living room? Yeah. So first we got this um, shelf and I was like, oh, this is perfect for the Ravensburger 500. So I basically just piled up it then. And then I went to reorganize the original puzzle cabinet. And it was like such a Tetris. And I, I got it like, I got it like perfectly done no space at all but everything fit together then you come home what did you come home with you came home with two puzzles ah yeah 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 yeah. so out of space again so now we bought one week after the other shelf and that's also full yeah it's really something else this storage problem but there is one thing that I was thinking, which is basically having over here another shelf in between those two uh, shelves. 
Okay. Yes, yeah. shelf between the shelves are full of shelves. <laughs> yes. So to frame it, so it will be everything like full, filled with puzzles, and it will frame the this area, the the wall television area. If you got any suggestions of how to do this, then please write in the comments below. Yeah. So we need to get creative of on how are we going to store all the puzzles because we do need the space for other things <laughs> yes beside puzzles <laughs> yeah so anyway now that we're kind of like well with the space again but then we bought new puzzles we like to buy puzzles from the reuse center so we bought four new puzzles from there yeah i think so let me let let me let me, me grab them. <laughs> let me grab. Yes. Grab. Yes. You can already show. So we got this one. Clementoni. Five hundred pieces. Called Delfini dolphins. <laughs> then we got another Clementoni. Romantic. Pro, uh, Pronade in Paris. I've seen this somewhere on Instagram, so I, I really liked it. I want to do it. I haven't done those yet. Um, however, I have done this one. Oh my God. I was so sad. I was so excited for this puzzle. I thought this is going to be the fastest puzzle ever and so like enjoyable. Um, if you follow me on TikTok, you're already probably seeing this. I finished, I would say like, it feels almost like 80% of the puzzle. Like yeah. all the sailing stuff. And so I did that like in 50 minutes. And then I was doing this sky for two and a half hours. It was just false fit after another. Nothing to separate the pieces. And then the puzzle was missing like one third of the edge pieces. Yeah, that, that's something else like but anyway, I remember the time was like, because I was like, I'm going to give up at a three hour point. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. And I think it was like two hours and 52 minutes. I called you like, you know, you want to help me for the last five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and you came like a couple minutes later. I wouldn't say I made a, I don't think we made a breakthrough, but somehow we just managed it. And in the end, I think the time was like three hours and 10 minutes that we finished it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just felt so terrible to do this because it just... Uh, everything felt so right, but so wrong. And also, <laughs> and yeah, because it has all the middle middle pieces yeah. were there, so no missing middle pieces. And when we had like this final last spot, empty spot in the bustle, and we had one middle piece left, and doesn't fit. And I was like, oh my god, you got to be. Yeah, and then yeah, I was yeah. just looking like the whole puzzle around, like what could it be like seamless? And then I was just removing and trying like again. And in the end I did find it, but that was like so painful. I, no, I'm getting rid of this right away. And then we had this uh, very old, you can see, it's, I, I like Does to do this because date? they're, uh, I don't think these even like have like a, you know, brand or anything. These are like this really old that you find from your crannies, like a basement or something. Yeah. No, it doesn't really have anything. But I like to do this because these are rather hard. My best with the 36 minutes for this one with a good lightning. But yeah, this was very nice. But then another story time. So. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. Ta-da! <laughs> well, we don't have even space to do this in this house. Why did we buy this? The story is we went to buy a uh, beam, which is like sour milk. I don't think there's word in English for that. And we went to the store. We know that there isn't really this kind of milk, but we went anyway there in the back of the store. We walk in the back of the store. There wasn't this milk. We walk back and the store was a little, they sell food here, but they always have this little section that have just random items yeah, that yeah, keep yeah. changing all the time. So then we saw this one shelf <laughs> that had this like a limited edition and it was like 24 euros and 99 cents. And it, yeah. it was this, and this was the only one left. Um, it was just waiting there, looking very lonely. 
Yeah. yeah so what exactly. have you done? I mean. I mean, it, it will be done in the future. Yeah, future investment. Future investment, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So this one we got also, and then we had a puzzle Christmas calendar. Mm -hmm. This was so hard to get. I sent you some links that these are the Christmas calendars I was thinking of, and then we, when we actually started to buy, we were like, everything is sold out already. I mean, it's like two months to Christmas at that point. And then we found that there is one waiting in uh, Prisma. It was like the last one in this city. And it was midnight on Sunday night. And you're like, let's go for a road trip. Yeah, let's go yeah, buy it. Because everything was already <laughs> sold out. And it was like, okay, we need to get it as soon as possible. Someone might get it in the midnight. <laughs> but we found a compromise so that we actually, it was possible to book. And then you went to buy, uh, buy it. Well, pick it up on the next day. But I was like, that better per person better like run in that night shift. And if some other client has it in their hands, they better just grab it and take it. We need this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so well. yeah, this is the this is very very cute. I recommend if you want a puzzle Christmas calendar, you should already like keep going because they're gonna be sold out. At least if you uh, live in Finland. Uh, but anyway, yeah. we thought that these six puzzles is all we got to show from this month. Uh, that's at least what I thought until yesterday. Uh, yeah, yesterday we went to Porvo. <laughs> yeah, so there's like this old town Porvo. It's an hour and a half with a car from here. It has this best puzzle store. It's not a puzzle store, it's a gift store, but they have the best puzzles. So we have a little bit more to show you. One second. Okay. Let's, okay. Let's do this. So one more micro mini puzzle. Yeah. Now we have three in total. Super cute. It has unicorns. Oh, sorry. One unicorn in it. <laughs> and then this one. It was the vlog I was uh, doing when we were traveling and we found in one small village same brand of puzzle and I was like this is the best thing ever and then like this is such a rare and unique and I've never seen this anymore and then people sent me on Instagram messages that oh I have that too it's uh, sold everywhere so <laughs> anyway <laughs> <the> I, <laughs> I guess they were right I mean it's still like a small store in uh, old town Porvo that we found this but yeah I really love the first one I believe this is gonna be as enjoyable as that one and then, yeah, I don't even know where to put this. Oh, then from my favorite store. I don't even know where to start. Okay, so we have hot dogs. <laughs> hey, to <Tuzi. laughs> So this is from uh, Mud Bobby, which to me is basically the same as Gallison because I think Gallison owns them. And I just love these puzzles. This is actually the first thousand piece puzzle I have for Mud Bobby. So I'm very excited for that because most of them are 500s that I have. And dogs are cute, really. What do you think? It's you're a just little bit so jealous. funny. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my god, there's so many puzzles here. Um, oh, we, then we have dogs with jobs. Yeah. Lily's like, that's oh, this epic. is for me. Where is my picture? Where is it? It's a bodyguard. And then you also wanted this this double side. How do you feel about this? Yeah, it's it's it looks very nice. I really like the art. Yeah, so this is the front, but uh, what is the other then, image from there? This is the other yeah. image. It has like a shiny on the other side and then the other one is more matta, right? Yeah. So I just love collage puzzles so much. I mean, it's so colorful, it's so nice. Yeah, I, li I like colors in puzzles yeah, it's, and it's, collages. It's also, uh, I think it's easier for beginners as well. I like this so much. So of all these puzzles that we had this month, what would be your top three? Mine. <laughs> Which were the dogs with the jobs, hot dogs and the double side. The artsy. Okay, artsy, okay, artsy cats, that was artsy my favorite. Artsy cats though. is really, really <laughs> nice. I really like it. Yeah, I'm very, it looks very excited. so, so good. It's the best. So as said, you never actually did any puzzles. I've no. been doing puzzles for like, I think, I don't even know anymore. 
I feel like this year went so fast. Yeah, this year <laughs> went so fast. Yeah, like I started last year. So. All right, I think so. That... So you never wanted to do really puzzles, even I tried to ask you. Uh, but then in Spain, it, it changed and you'll be actually doing puzzles after that. So yeah. how do you feel now about puzzles? Like now that you're actually doing them, what, what's, what makes it enjoyable for you? I think that one of the points is that it's something that is uh, some hobby that we could do together. And I find that really, really good. For me, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit harder to accomplish to, and complete all these puzzles because you complete them in like one hour and then I complete them in five hours. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can so. do like on a lunch break, but you actually need to take some time to, to do the yeah. puzzles. Okay, yeah, exactly. So in that, in that point of view, it's a little bit like, uh, I'm very competitive, so I feel a little <laughs> bit demotivated doing them. However, I, oh, I'm also very motivated to do it because uh, I want to be able to compete next year in Spain and try to beat Emilia and her pair. <laughs> We'll, we'll see. We'll see if we will be able to execute Yeah, I, that. I would love that. I think that would be great. Yeah, and I think that I, I found it quite relaxing to do the puzzles, to put, a, for example, a certain podcast in, uh, with headphones mm -hmm. and then just listen to the podcast while doing the puzzle. And yeah, I, I found it to be like a very, very good activity before going to sleep, for example. Yeah, and talking about podcast, I was also in the Puzzle podcast this month. I was uh, invited and, and Rosa was interviewing me, mainly about the worlds, but also like the speed puzzling tips. That was so much fun as well. And talking about my next year's goals, because you said that you want to uh, participate in the worlds. Well, my goals are to be the fastest in the, in the Finland, which basically currently I'm second fastest after my <laughs> pair. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's one of my goals. But my second goal is to actually be on top 10 in the world. Yeah, you got one year to train. I actually need, actually now, yeah, I have time to because last year it was like I just started and I was like, oh, there's this world. I'm going. <laughs> but it will be interesting because I think that the puzzle community is growing. It is. It so is. there might be even more people that... There's more competition. Yeah, more yeah. competition. <laughs> Uh, and that would be really, really interesting to see. I, I will M imagine find a lot. <laughs> so, someone out of nowhere will come and will beat Alejandro. Yeah, but it's, it's like very possible because this year was 80% new. So I think the next year it's going to be, I think it's even one day actually longer. I think it was from 17 to 20, 23 of September. So that means it's one day longer event, isn't it? I, I think so. so. I guess so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think they are also anticipating more people coming. Yeah, yeah. Because I, it, it I, I believe that more people will start participating. At least yeah. here in Finland, it seems like the the puzzle community is growing. Yeah, it's growing because more people are coming. Like I think social media also has a part to it because people follow. They see like, oh, this is a thing. And then first yeah. of all, they got knowledge that there is this kind of things, and then also like they can be encouraged and you know get more tips because for example I, I get a lot of tips from the comments that i get and i'm like oh I like you have a really good point there i started to find it enjoyable although i never did any puzzles before yeah this year or two months ago <laughs> before spain <laughs> before spain. So it's like before yeah. spain and after spain before spain and i really didn't touch any puzzles yeah, and then my third goal would be to actually do the puzzles that I had on my puzzle bucket list that I... I think that was my, actually my first video here. So actually to actually do them, not just have them on the list. Yeah. Uh, but also that and also to practice for the worlds. And I think that's a perfect thing because you have sent me uh, in October a lot of good recommendations of puzzles to do. So I'm going to share them and also some great comments from this month. For example, talking about the Gallison puzzle, somebody was recommending uh, a Gallison uh, puzzle called Paper Paradise. I Google it, looks perfect. Definitely going to do it. Yeah. Anyway, there was also Rick Puzzles commenting here. His channel is pretty amazing. I love his editing style. 
Have you seen these videos? No, I haven't seen any. You of should the definitely videos. check them out. Anyway, he commented, by the way, I also wear glasses. I don't feel good camera wearing them. Uh, you look great with glasses. Cheers. That's so true, and I realize only also that you have glasses on because it usually reflects the light and it looks a little bit annoying on the camera. That's why I don't use them that often as well. But I have to use them when I actually do the puzzle. Aha. Uh -huh. Because I don't see anything. And I wonder if other people who do puzzles and wear glasses have the same issues that I can actually see. Like, I can see the frames of my glasses when I do the puzzles. It's very annoying. Yeah. Harry, Harry Potter glasses? Yeah. With no frames? I don't know, yeah. can you have glasses with no frames at all? Yeah, it would be like, you know, top frame or something. Oh, like by that. the way, I swear to God, the, the frames is right word right now because I keep calling the edge pieces frames. and. People quite often also comment like, what is the word in English? But I've come to the conclusion that it depends where they live, like native English speakers. Like I was asking in one video, what is like the, like the hair tie or something called? And I have, I've, I swear to God, I have like eight different words now for it. All of the above. We speak English. I don't, be, I don't think people understand it because we live in Finland. But you speak Spanish natively, I speak Finnish, so we've been speaking like uh, English for eight years. Yes. I don't even remember when I, the, back in time I was thinking in Finnish, because I do think in English, but I obviously we're not native speakers, so then we kind of come up with our own words within yeah. the years. Thingy thanga. Thingy thanga and <laughs> all yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, the thingy thanga is applicable for everything. Everything. Yeah. You the thingy tongue of the glasses. Yeah, you need yeah. to tinkle about it. <laughs> yeah. I do, and we also, most of our friends speak English. We only have one native friend. Like oh, an yeah. English native. Yeah. And you say something and with the native English speaker and then they look at you like... What are you talking about? <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, I should probably... Like, I know how to speak correctly, so I should probably do that. But it's like, it comes so naturally, so I don't even think about it. But well, and there was really good recommendation, because I think now they're going to start using more round puzzles. So, for example, there is this... I don't know how to pronounce this. Elena is expert paradise. And then... Ipo Crazy Park Bouquet? Is Ipo a brand? It is definitely something. Uh, I did the commentary on group C of the pairs in the qualifying rounds. So if you haven't watched that, you can still do that. Oh, and we have another puzzler called Emilia. This is crazy because we have so many Emilias from Finland. <laughs> and then somebody commented, I have granddaughters and they picked the Ravensburg 1000 piece Disney Wonderful World from our trip to the local puzzle store. It's a round puzzle. It was fun to build. I also checked that one out looks amazing. I would definitely do it. I haven't done a thousand piece puzzle with the round shape. I love the thumbnail. <laughs> I love making the thumbnails. It's so much fun. Yeah. I was thinking that maybe next year's competition you need to group all the Emilias. Oh yeah. And beat Team Emilia. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we should, but the thing is, there's so many Emilias that there would be multiple teams and then somebody would be kicked out. And uh, I mean, <laughs> not enough space for all the Emilias. Two teams of Emilias. Oh, that would be funny. Uh, then there was actually a lot of discussion, like who, apparently the wooden puzzle sales were quite expensive. I think here they are pretty much, the, I might be wrong, but I feel like they're, they're not that much expensive than regular puzzles, depending on the brand, of course. I think they're quite expensive. Okay, so I, I declare myself as being wrong, but there was like a long conversation. So if you know really good uh, wooden puzzles, uh, comment below, because people are, are clearly like interested. And especially if you know ones that are not like super expensive, I think people would definitely appreciate that. So somebody also commented the round puzzles. How do you pronounce? Fas fascinate, fascinate. fascinate me. I'm pretty much a beginner puzzle, so I'm a little bit intimidated. I got two of my own. I'm trying to work up the nerve to do one. We're talking about the round puzzles here. You did so great at the world. My first puzzle was round puzzle. Your first puzzle was a round puzzle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found it really fun to do that. Uh, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. But on the other hand, you didn't have like comparison at yeah. the moment. So for you... It couldn't be different from anything because you haven't yeah. done anything before. Yeah, but the next puzzle was a normal puzzle. And then, yeah, I, I think that I enjoyed more the round puzzle. 
it's much more funky, I would say. It's fun and also I've seen like this, they call it the meditation puzzles. I think it's just a marketing trick, but those meditation puzzles are always round. So mm. I think there is something into it. Somebody also commented that an easier and hard puzzle can be a little bit difficult to define. Depends on what kind of images the puzzle likes doing and one would find hard and one would find easy. I do puzzles, so images I like and can be very varied. I would like to see you doing the, either the archaeologist's desk or springtime in Paris. I think both of these are puzzles that were in the world. I do not have those puzzles. I'm very interested in doing them, but I think probably next year I have so many puzzles on the to-do list right now. Yeah. <laughs> but those are wonderful puzzles. And then also I'm currently working on Nova 1000 puzzle called Colorful Bubbles. Look forward to next video, whatever is that. Uh, yeah. I also googled that one, looks very great. So I'm gonna definitely start also doing these puzzles to practice for the world next year. But yeah, there were so many great comments also this month, like uh, I don't even know which ones to share because there's just a plenty. I heard a crazy rumor that you're gonna build your own puzzle. What is that? Yeah, I want to build my own wooden puzzle. I started googling and I started to to form up a plan for doing that. And just to clarify, we're not discussing here that you want to like do a customer's puzzle and order it from the company who does customer's no, no, puzzles. No, 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 do it from scratch. Like from the wood, from scratch. The, <laughs> like literally just buy a wood, wood piece and also do the model, the art on the top of the puzzle. Although I am nowhere being and I'm an artist, so I will need to see how the heck am I going to do crafty. this. You're <laughs> crafty. So, <laughs> at least for the creating the pieces, uh, I got an idea already. But the part that is really <laughs> troublesome for me is how to create this art on the top of the, of the wood pieces. Any tips, anyone? I'm not understanding anything of this. So maybe you're going to do one of the tutorials how to build your own puzzle from the scratch <laughs> with a someday over the rainbow someday over the rainbow I, I need to still figure out a lot of things to get it done i think that would be that would be really fun to do yeah but anyway a lot of talking today let me know in the comments also if you actually like this type of uh, puzzles i'm so in the puzzle <laughs> if you like this type of videos and anyway, I also wanted to tell you that because we got the thousand subscribers, so there is currently a giveaway, but it's on my Instagram, so you can participate there. I will put the link on the description or comments or whatsoever, wherever I can put it. The reason why it's not here, even though we're celebrating the subscribers here, God damn it. <laughs> is uh, because I haven't, I haven't really ever used YouTube. I don't know how people do it here and I feel like it's hard to contact maybe the winner. I think there's a little bit risk for, you know, somebody coming here to scan, like pre presenting, to, presenting to be me and then commenting on my behalf or that I try to contact the winner and then it goes to the wrong person. Yeah, it's the communication part that is a little bit troublesome. So I haven't figured this out. So that's why it's in the Instagram. I hope you don't mind. You can go there and, and that is for this time. So... I will see you next time. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye.